Welcome to the Hugging Face Boardroom. Today on the agenda is the Enterprise Hub. We're going to go quickly over all the different features and then deep dive on each of them. But what is it? What is the Enterprise Hub? So you probably know the Hugging Face Hub. That's where AI builders go to create, share, and collaborate around models, data sets, and machine learning applications. And there are over a million of them on the Hugging Face Hub. And when people want to collaborate privately, they create organizations for their teams or their companies. And there are over 100,000 of these organizations on the Hub. So what is Enterprise Hub? It's a subscription so that companies can get more security, access controls, and compute features as they build machine learning. All right, enough talk. Let me just show you. Meet me at the desktop. And here we go, the Enterprise Hub. You can find it at hf.co slash enterprise. And Enterprise Hub is 20 bucks per user per month. So what do you get for those 20 bucks? Well, let's take a look. All right, the first thing you get is single sign-on. And that's a very important feature to make sure that everybody within your organization is actually an employee of your company. The second thing is regions. And regions is very important, for instance, for GDPR compliance, to make sure that models and data sets that are created in your organization are going to be hosted, maybe on European servers or on US servers. The third thing is audit logs. It's a very convenient way for admins of your organization to look back on all the changes in your organization, to know who made what change and when. Next, with Enterprise Hub, you now have access to a bunch of very exciting new features, and one is resource groups. Resource groups is a way to define fine-grain access controls for your repository. So you can create groups of repositories for which people of your organization may or may not have access and define what kind of permissions they have on those repos. That's resource groups. The next one is private datasets viewer. Something that the community really appreciates on the Hugging Face Hub is the ability to pick into and explore the training data that is part of these gigantic datasets that go into training machine learning models. And with Enterprise Hub, you can do the same thing on the datasets that you privately host within your Enterprise Hub organization. And there's a lot more. There are advanced compute options. Maybe you're using Hugging Face inference endpoints to deploy your models for production. Maybe you're using Hugging Face spaces to create online applications for your machine learning models. With Enterprise Hub, you have access to beefier, larger, more powerful compute options, in addition to exclusive services like train on DGX Cloud, which is a very easy way, no code way to fine tune large language models or image, image generation models uh, directly using uh, NVIDIA's DGX Cloud H100s as a backend. So very cool, exciting advanced compute options on the Enterprise Hub. And there is a lot more. With Enterprise Hub, you get priority for your support requests. You can set advanced billing options like a spending cap. And so lots more to talk about. We'll dive into each of those features individually uh, in following videos. So there you go. That's Enterprise Hub. We have some amazing organizations that are already part uh, of uh, Enterprise Hub organizations. Organizations like Qualcomm, like Nvidia, like Cloudflare, Fetch, Sanofi, etc. So we're very excited uh, for more of these hundreds of thousands of organizations to upgrade to Enterprise Hub so they can have access to more security, to more access controls and to advanced compute options and more. I hope that helped. Uh, I hope that it gives you a good picture of what it is uh, that Enterprise Hub is and also answer to a question that I get every day, which is, well, how does Hugging Face make money exactly? All right, hopefully that will give you some of the answers. Cheers. 
But first, why is single sign-on so important? Well, on the Hugging Face Hub, we make it super easy for people to collaborate together privately within organizations. And when you are an admin of an organization, you can very easily invite people either by using this option to enable inviting users by sharing a link or via email, or by just adding a button on your organization page so that people can request to be added. And this is great so that you can bring people in from different organizations to work on the same projects. But if you are at a company, this may not work because you may not want to have people outside of the company have access to your models, data sets and applications. And maybe you want to make sure that when people leave your company or join your company, you can make sure that every single member of your organization is currently employed by your company. And that's what single sign on is all about. So let's take a look at the options um, for these uh, organizations, which is upgraded to uh, Enterprise Hub. So what you can see here are the options and they are available if you are an admin of the organization. Uh, for you to configure single sign-on for your organization. And we support a couple different protocols. I'm not going to go too deep into like the technical aspects of it, but if you're using OpenID Connect or if you're using SAML, we have uh, instructions for you to follow so that you can integrate your identity provider, which can be Okta, which can be Azure Active Directory with Enterprise Hub on the Hugging Face Hub. And the way to do that is to add the different parameters um, so everything is configured on your end. And of course, it is something for uh, the IT administrators at your company to take care of. Once you've done that, and we have great documentations to follow to do it, you have access to some pretty cool features. Let's take a look at users management. Here you can uh, decide when you want the current session uh, of users who are signed into your organization when these sessions should expire. And another thing that is really cool is if you have uh, specific roles and permissions within your identity provider, then you can have a mapping so that pe uh, people with, uh, say, writing permission within your organization can have a writer role uh, on your Hugging Face Enterprise Hub organization. So it's a very nice way to make sure that whatever access controls and permissions uh, you have set up uh, within your organization already can be mapped into the different roles that are provided within your organization, contributor, read, write, or admin. All right, and one last thing that I want to show you about single sign-on with Enterprise Hub is the ability to onboard new members of your uh, Enterprise Hub organization with some special message, or maybe you want to add uh, some getting started guides, or maybe you want them to know that they are going to approve a certain number of rules or give them some steps to follow. And it's very, very easy to do. So here I'm going to type a welcome message um, and I'm going to tell new, uh, new members that they should enable two-factor authentication uh, to access uh, the organization. Please enable, oops, please enable to F... A, and that's it. Now I can save this and every new member uh, of uh, the organization will see this message before they can have access to all the content of your organization. All right, so that was in a nutshell SSO on the Enterprise Hub. Next time we will cover resource groups. Until then, bye. OK, so in the last video, we talked about single sign on, which is a great way to make sure that every member of your organization is an employee of your company. But sometimes you need even more fine grained access controls. For instance, maybe you have different teams within your company that are working on different projects and you want to make sure that the people who can access a specific project and its assets are the right people. And that is what resource groups enable on the Enterprise Hub. So let me show you how it works on this sample organization. I'm going to go to the settings. 
once I'm in the settings because I am an admin of that organization and the organization is upgraded to Enterprise Hub, I have access to resource groups. And here I can see that there are already two resource groups that have been created, the AGI team and the Get Real team. So let's take a look at the AGI team. So the AGI team already has four members, four users. We have Elliot, who's an admin of the resource group. We have Moritz and Sylvestre, who can write onto the repositories. And we have Julien, who can read the content of the repositories. So only these four users within the Enterprise Hub organization have access to the content. And the content is this repository, this private data set that only this resource group has access to. All right, now let's take a look at the second resource group, the Get Real Team. And the Get Real Team wants to do some real work, but there is no repositories and there are no users as part of this resource group. So let's add some users. I'm going to add Abhishek. I'm going to add Julien. I'm going to add myself to this resource group. And Abhishek is going to be an admin. Julien is going to be able to write onto repositories, and I'm only going to be able to view them. All right, they're added. Now, what I want to do is to add some repositories to this resource group. And this group is going to be able to train some great models with AutoTrain. So first, let me add a data set. Then I will add um, a model. And next, I will add spaces to create uh, more models. So AutoTrain Advanced. Let's add them up. All right, so now I have within the Get Real Team resource group three re repositories for which Abhishek, Julien, and myself are going to have access to. And that is resource groups on the Enterprise Hub, a great way for you to define fine grade access controls so that the right people within your organization have access to the right resources. I hope that was helpful and see you for the next one. Regions is a way for admins of an enterprise hub organization to specify where models or data sets of your organization are going to be hosted by Hugging Face. So let me show you how it looks. First, I will go to the settings of this organization, which has been upgraded to enterprise hub and I'm an admin, so I have access to regions. Now that I am in regions, I can see that every new model or data set that is created within my organization are going to be hosted on US servers. Well, let me switch that to Europe. Say I have some GDPR compliance rules and I need them to be hosted on European servers. All I need to do is to change the region and save changes. And there we go. Every new model, every new data set that is going to be created within my organization is now going to be hosted on European servers. Today, US and Europe are available for models and data sets. We will add more options when needed. If you want to see which of your repositories are hosted within a particular region, you can do that very easily by just clicking on the list of here, models hosted in Europe. And there you go, you can see a list of all the models that are being hosted on European servers. That was Regions on the Enterprise Hub. I hope that was helpful, and I will see you for the next one. Cheers. Audit Log is an advanced security feature of Enterprise Hub. With Audit Log, admins of an organization can easily look back at everything that happened within their organization. Let's see how it works. As an admin of this Enterprise Hub organization, I have access to Audit Log, where I can find all the information I'm looking for, maybe a new model or data set repository was created, maybe the visibility of a repository was changed, maybe a resource group was edited, maybe somebody new joined the organization. Everything is available to me as events, so I know who made what change when, 
and I can easily download all this information as a JSON file in one click. So that is audit log, an advanced security feature part of Enterprise Hub.